Hey, we're Paul and Jonas and we're making a minimalist base defense game called Thronefall. During the day you upgrade your castle and at night you defend against waves of enemies. In today's video we're gonna make a bunch of exciting improvements, build a new level and also build a boss fight. Paul and I are both full-time indie game developers and for me this is my third commercial game that I'm working on. But nevertheless we're still constantly making mistakes and learning new stuff. In the last episode we did a playtest and learned that players want more customization options for the castle. In Thronefall you can only build predefined buildings on predefined builds slot so I can see where they are coming from. Our obvious solution was giving the player more choices. So for example when you upgrade a tower to the maximum level you get to choose what kind of tower it should evolve into. We tested that with the tower, it worked well, it was fun. What do you do when you discover that something is fun? You try to add more of it. So I quickly planned out some choices for some other buildings and then started modeling the models I needed for those. So now when you upgrade your barracks all the way to level 3, you are presented with a choice of which unit type you would like to upgrade your units into. New units don't make themselves, so here you can see me work on the spearmen. And of course testing the spearmen to see if they're completely overpowered or not. In the best case, units should both be overpowered and underpowered, depending on the situation they're in. For example, spearmen are incredibly good against fast enemies, cause they deal bonus damage and slow them down. Chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> but on the other side, following the Age of Empires logic, they stink against archers. Instead of having the unit decision at the end, I think we would actually like to have the unit decision at the very beginning. Now there's only one problem. The current architecture doesn't really allow for that. A few moments later and now the architecture allows for it. So now when you build a barracks, you immediately get to decide which unit type you wanna be there. I split the mutations into their own category. So that means you can pick three perks and as many mutations as you want now. A lot of the new perks you can select before the game aren't actually working yet, so slowly working my way through them here. You might be wondering what Paul has been up to. You can see we got a way nicer treasure chest in the bottom right corner now, and the tooltips look much much better. And Paul is also slowly getting started on sound design and so on. The devlogs are catching up with reality quite quickly now. I recorded this in February after a two week mental health break. Our time schedule looks very unrealistic, so time to push everything back again. I started back into work by giving the ranged units the same treatment that I already gave them. Unit. Sure, let's give this pal a crossbow or something. Very nice. And now when you build an archer hut, you get to choose. Each of these units comes with its unique strengths and weaknesses, of course. Finishing off the remaining unit types. Here, fire archers putting the ground on fire. There's one problem that for a long time I didn't really know how to solve, and that is scaling the strength of the player. Because you as the king, you can fight, but as you keep upgrading your castle, as you have more and more units to support you, and as there are more and more powerful enemies coming in, your player character just feels weaker and weaker in comparison. So the way we initially solved this is every time you upgrade the castle center, the player also gets more powerful. Unfortunately, playtesters did not react to this too, too well because it's a little tricky to understand and it also doesn't offer any interesting decisions or any little... And yes, I'll leave that in the video to build up your cringe resistance. Specifically yours. Oh, you're welcome. Long story short, I found a different solution. Choices! Because if the player can choose their own upgrade when upgrading the castle center, they cannot miss it! So this makes it easier to understand and you get an extra choice, so that's two dinosaurs with one meteor as far as I'm concerned. DIE DINOSAURS! DIE! I can't believe that after watching me for so long, some of you still have not built up a proper cringe resistance. So every time you upgrade the castle center, you can now choose. More choices. I think this was a very good design decision cause it allows for a lot of different play styles now. You can go for an aggressive build, you can go for an economic build. Wow, I went through the effort of recording something extra. The last time that happened, I was still a child. Yo, 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 another day, another bit. Connect. Yeah. Fully testing and implementing all of those upgrades obviously took another while. All added a little light at night, so now the city feels more alive. And before you go like, you should add more lights, more lights. Uh, this is a compromise we're striking for performance reasons. We want you to destroy enemies, not your PC. Due to the fact that you can command units now and they'll basically follow you around, there were two new exploits that desperately needed taking care of. Duke all of them over here. You can basically run enemies in circles. And I fixed that, so you can't do that with the king. But <laughs> now that units can follow you around, you can just duke enemies with your units. Oh, that's kind of a 
not great. Babadum, babadum. Now units that are following you around do no longer attack, nor are they attacked. So there are probably still some exploits you can do, but it's a lot more difficult and it's not as bad anymore. So this this should be okay. The other exploit I had to fix was spawn camping. It was a pretty boring and overpowered strategy. So I created these little explosions and now when enemies spawn in, they deal some spawn damage. It doesn't make spawn camping impossible, but it discourages it. And to me, that feels like a good middle ground. We have 20 new upgrades now, and I think that'll be a little overwhelming for new players. So I thought I'd put one half of these into the progression system. So these are all gonna go into the progress progression system. At the beginning, you'll be able to select between all of these. I just had a little idea for the level select screen. What if you unlock these little houses whenever mm. you beat a level or whenever you beat some challenges on that level? So as you play the game, you slowly uh, build your kingdom and cover everything with houses. I think that could be really cool. I added two new tabs here, so you'll have the loadout tab and then you'll have the quests tab. Score tab will be for comparing your score to the score of your friends. All implemented some first sounds, so my morning was spent on testing those. Riding sounds, yeah! Coin sounds, and then when you start the night, you get a little bit of music. Yo, I just got a first high score to be uploaded to Steam. Now it's finally official. I'm better than Paul. Ha 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 ha. Get wrecked. have these pretty banners now. I just modeled these real quick in Blender and they also have a little number on top of them telling you how many quests you already finished. The purpose of quests is mostly to encourage some replayability and to also provide an extra challenge to those who need it. And then we can just expand this as we keep adding more and more levels. Speaking of levels, it was finally, finally time to get back on some level design. I created another enemy type that explodes when it dies, which encourages you to spread out your units a little more. I created this level in the last devlog over 20 work days ago. It was almost turning into a running gag, how I never found the time to finish it, but now was the time. The main thing left to do was balancing the enemy waves, so deciding which enemies and how many spawn when, and of course where, and then playtesting over and over again. Oh god, what's... No! I was already cooking up an idea for the next level. I thought after this dry, hot level it would be really nice to have a wet, wintry landscape, potentially with a boss fight. Oh god, that's brutal. Our current plan is to launch the game in early access as soon as we have three proper high quality levels. That's not a lot, so I wanted to make sure that those three at the very least are really, really good and really solid. Following a quality over quantity approach and making sure that every level feels really unique. Okay, following Paul's advice, I added some icicles here and I think it looks good. Excellent, Nuff Mesh is looking good as well. Such a lovely level. Oh. For me personally, what I would say makes for a good level is that it has some actual new content and it's not just recycled content. So I think every main level in Thronefall should have some new enemy types and if possible even some new buildings. Here you can see the finished fishing harbor in action. It's an economic building and I'm not gonna explain in detail how it works. You'll have to play to find out. And I had an idea for another building, a blacksmith building where you can purchase even more upgrades for yourself and for your units. Mm, I mean, you want more choices? I'm giving you more choices. And it's definitely reaching the point where I myself don't even know what the best strategy is anymore. There are just way too many options for builds you can go for and I think that's how it should be, right? You should discover the builds. My job is to create some interesting and varied challenges and your job is to find the solutions. Okay, let's for example go for melee attack. Now this will take three nights to upgrade and in this time I shouldn't be able to upgrade this building. So now you can see the progress bar finishes. And we got a little sword icon over the blacksmith here. Now if I want I can upgrade the blacksmith again and if I do I get to pick another upgrade. So you get to pick three upgrades in total and of course if you want you can for example go all in on melee attack. Why not? 
So now that we have two new buildings, let's also make some new enemies. The first one I came up with are these slimes here, which give you an opportunity to make all of your splash damage attacks shine, because they get really close together. Also, this gave me an excuse to make some enemies that are really, really stupid and just attack whatever is closest to them. I also wanted to have an enemy type that is almost immune to arrow attacks, and I think the ram is pretty much perfect for this, because it explains itself really well, right? It literally has an arrow shield on top of it. The only exception are these fire archers here. They deal a little bit more damage to siege engines and I didn't use the crossbows in the last level so we also got the crossbows as a new enemy type. I feel like I completely speed ran this level if you consider how long it took me to make the last level. We even got already all of the level boundaries in place here. The only thing this level still needs is a name so let's call it Frostsee. I wasn't entirely sure if and how boss fights would work in a game like Thronefall, so I was left with only one choice, and that was to prototype it and try it out, but as soon as I saw this in game I was like, we need this, we need this! So I created a bunch of keyframes for the head of the boss, and once that took too much damage, I'm gonna change its position. I think that's pretty cool. We'll be launching Thronefall into Early Access very very soon, so now's the perfect time to wishlist it on Steam if you haven't already. Check out the link in the description. Every wishlist helps a ton, so we really do appreciate that. And the development journey continues. Thanks for watching.